it's like, well, who else can we call? Let's get Nicholas Cage. He'll do it. It's like he, he, <laughs> he ain't got nothing else to do. Yeah, he's the Mikey in the life serial ads of movies. If there's right, nobody right, else that will do it, Nicholas Cage will do it, and you know, and he'll and he'll make it and he'll make it seem like he he's enjoying every minute of it. You know, which I, I think something. he does. He oh yeah, he likes making movies. That that's obvious because he he's in a lot of them, and I enjoyed Face Off, but. Ghost Rider. I don't know why there was a part two. I don't know. It was that that just definitely deserves a reboot because they disrespected Ghost Rider to me. Yeah. And as a Ghost Rider fan, I felt disrespected and slighted. Yeah. Well, good news on that end is that Ghost Rider, the rights to that as well as Blade and uh, the Punisher, are back with Marvel Studios, yeah, sure. so they can they can start doing some old uh, all kinds of great stuff with that, you know. I hopefully they can work that into, say, the Netflix uh, series, or to have like uh, the, you know, have something else going on with that. Ah oh, man, how excited are you for that, man? Man, I am. You know, just the whole thing with cinema and and and, and the uh, and, and Marvel and even DC. It's like an arms race, and it's like we're all winners because they just keep putting out all these great movies. And yes. It's like comic books on screen. It does enrage me a few times because what they do is they take the story and twist it now. You know, I like, uh, I got, I went on a rant the other day about, uh, Harry Osborne being the one to kill Gwen, Gwen Stacy. Amazing Spider-Man 2, spoiler yeah, alert, folks. Yeah, I know, I know, yeah. man. But yeah. I, heard it too. I saw it the other day. Yeah. yeah. But hey, spoilers from 1975 because we all knew Gwen Stacy was gonna Gwen die. Gwen Stacy got dropped off a bridge a long time ago, people. Yeah. All right? Come on. Get over it. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're under the age of 10, your parents should have told you. Yeah, you know, yeah. If, if you don't know that, you got bad parents. How about yeah. that? Yeah, and you, and why you listen to my podcast anyway? It's explicit. Motherfucker, right. big pussy's not shit. See, there you go. I, don't ru- I just ruined your your childhood. <laughs> so, no, I was gonna say something. All right, go ahead, man. You can say we're uncensored, man. Uh, I'm not gonna say now. Go tell your mama come listen. <laughs> oh lord, <laughs> the, the views expressed by Kevo on this podcast. <laughs> I, I, I support him 200%. Go see him, mama. Uh, <laughs> Can I bring up something else real quick? Sure, man. All right. Batman vs. Superman, Dawn of Justice. DC came all blustery mm-hmm. at Marvel, talking about they're going to release the same day as Captain America 3. They saw the figures of Guardians of the Galaxy and were like, nah. Flinched hard. They flinched hard, and then they started... Uh, you know what they're doing in the behind the scenes? They're trying to figure out what to do with the uh, Green Lantern reboot if they're going to do that, or they call they call around Ryan Reynolds and not getting uh, he's not picking up. Good. <laughs> Good. Oh man, you know what? I like it. I like the fact that Avengers the first one made them start to panic like for real because they were sitting on their ass like, oh, well, we got the Dark Knight, so that's great, man, and you know we got Man of Steel coming up. Avengers, boom. Like, and then it just just tore it up, and, and then soon as that happened, that opened the night. Everyone in the in Warner Brothers in DC, they had their staff meeting. It was probably all hands. Computers uh, they, were putin, man. They was putin. A uh, catering, uh, twenty four seven. You know, they yeah. was putting out fresh fruit platters and cheese platters and everything. <laughs> like, yo, man, we gonna be here all night. Get that coffee drip, man. They was like just putting in the burning the midnight, the three a.m. oil. Until they could come up with an idea. You know, it was an angry white dude with a suit, like, something's got to be done. Oh, what are we going to do there, Chuck? Do you see these numbers here, Johnson? Well, we were going to do Man of Steel, too, because, you know, Superman had more story. No. Batman versus Superman. We got to get people in the theaters. (laughs) It's got to have the Justice League. Batman versus Superman. Justice League. No, we could use Rise of the Justice League. No, that Rise of the shit is played out. Uh, Dawn of Justice. Yeah, Dawn of is the new Rise of. Let's do that. Gotta think outside of the box, Johnson. Yeah. Gotta get ahead of the ball on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, and that's why I love competition. Yeah. Competition brings out the best in people. It does. And, and with DC, they should have been ashamed of themselves. They've been sitting on their ass with Warner Brothers and that connection between the uh, publisher and the film studio for years. Since, um, since the first Superman. Since Steel. Since, uh, freaking Catwoman. You know, and they were tearing it up with animation, and that's why they were resting on the laurels, I think. Yeah. Because uh, DC animated movies, man, are above all. They are fantastic. You know why? Because they follow the comic books closely. When mm-hmm. you follow the source material closely, it works out for you. And even, Funny how that happens. Yeah, it does. 
Guardians of the Galaxy not too doesn't stray too far from the source material. You know, it, it doesn't. Um, Avengers even. You know, okay, it, they, they did change some things, but guess what? It's pretty pretty damn close. But when you start doing dumb shit like they did in the X-Men franchise, and then you got to re-explain that and put the shit back in the horse, which is what they tried to do with First Class and then now with uh, Days of Future Past, people saw Days of Future Past and said it's an excellent movie, but this and this and this. And most of the gripes were um, things that basically were out of continuity with comics. How can Havoc be older than Cyclops, who hasn't been born yet, uh, but he's his younger brother. Uh, you know, how can, how is it Wolverine is the only one that can go back where in the comics Kitty Pride can go back in time? So, comic book guy rants, but guess what? They're not comic from comic book guys. These are people that are barely reading comics that are coming up with these same observations. We are not that stupid. And that's the main gripe I have with Hollywood is they think we are as dumb as dog shit. And, and the numbers show it when people go and, go and say 65% say that they like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. You know, I mean, the critics are assholes. We go, we know that, but they get some of that shit right. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, and <laughs> as, I yeah. came from, uh, I came from Guardians of the Galaxy with a good feeling. I came from uh, Dark Knight with a good feeling. Yeah, and the critics agree. Yep. Uh, and, Planet of the Apes it came out of that. That was good. And give me excellent. Yeah, ninety percent. You know, and then there are the ones that are like, okay, well. You know, Expendables, not that great with the critics, but the, the crowd loves it, and guess what? That makes sense. No one... I, this, I'm not going to get on Michael Bay anymore. This is, this is going to be a... This is like a string of Michael... I hate Michael Bay podcasts. Yeah, let's not do that, but... I mean, it, the, and the numbers show. The, yeah. it's, at the end of the day, it's the ticket sales. Yeah, but let's switch gears for a second, man, because right. uh, I wanted to ask you, too, about... Uh, some of the music that you be uh, finding. I mean, I know it's because you're a DJ, you you know a lot about these tracks and everything. But like, what's your relationship with music? Uh, whether it's uh, uh, the chop and screw down there in Houston, which I'm still trying to understand. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me ask you this: What's popping right now in music that that you like? What's popping right now? Um, I'm I'm a fan of. Then some new artists. I'm trying not to stay stuck in the old school. Yeah. But it's a comfortable place. But um, you know, of course, I just went to a Kendrick Lamar concert. Killed it. Dope. He killed it. I mean, he made Trey Songz look better, which you know <laughs> that was a stretch. Yeah. Um, like I mean, seriously, people people stayed around because Kendrick's set was so good that. They stayed and watched Trey Songs, and some some people immediately went to the bathroom, but some were still vibing and talking about Kendrick. That when Trey came on, they were like, "Okay, I guess I'll check this out too." And it's him, uh, Charles Cambino. I, I like his style. Any person that's not afraid to uh, show a, a style that's different from what we hear on the radio or from what's considered uh, normal hip hop, and they make it work, I'm a fan. Right. And it's it's hard to find. Uh, music nowadays that that it, and anyway you're supposed to do your own research on your music. It is, man. Yeah, you you know, I mean, you can have your style influenced by others, but at this at, at the same time, it's what you play and what you like. Like people right. ask me what music do you listen to, I'm like, I really don't. I listen to podcasts. <laughs> like anytime I put on my iTunes, you know what I listen to a lot of soundtracks, movie soundtracks. That's my big thing, and it's always been like so. Like I'll listen to like. Uh, Danny Elfman, uh, you know, his soundtrack to, you know, Batman or to Spider-Man or, you know, the old Spider-Man movies or, you know, like, I just like, you know, video game soundtracks, movie soundtracks, you know, that kind of music. Uh, I, I don't get into TV soundtracks. Like, I, if I could, I would listen to, like, all, like, sitcom theme songs. I'd be, like, Facts of Life and Jefferson's and shit like that just going all day. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but with today's artists, too, I jump, jump in, jump in every now and then, but I think I do like the mixtapes because you get that variety and it's like discovery. That was my next question. Do you still like produce mixtapes? Like, is that something you still like cranking out on the on the side, or is that side hustle of yours? No, I stopped because I I really because I moved on to podcasting yeah. and because I didn't really vibe with the, the popular music because. 